Today we're going to be talking about the BMAT section 1 conclusions and assumption type questions. In this lesson, we will be talking about conclusion and assumption type questions. In the verbal overview, we already agreed on a definition for conclusions. A conclusion is a final part of something. A conclusion is supported by premises, and just to remind you, a premise is an idea or theory on which a statement or action is based. One of the most commonly encountered in the BMAT are conclusion type questions. Some questions may ask you to state the conclusion or the principal conclusion. This is the statement that encapsulates the nature of the argument, which is backed up by premises. The conclusion question can be asked in different formats, and keywords to look out for are those such as concluded, inferred by, supported by, deduced. This will help you to quickly recognize what is being asked from the question. When you see these words, you can recognize that in these questions, you will be identifying what conclusion can be made by the information given in the text. This conclusion must logically follow from the text. It is important not to make your own conclusions or assumptions, which are not supported by facts within the text. I'll present you with a question and you will have 60 seconds to answer it. You may start now. Did that go all right? For all of those sitting the UCAT, I'm sure that you noticed that the verbal section of the BMAT is much more generous with time. Additionally, the passages are shorter and therefore you should have enough time to read the passage and the question thoroughly and then choose the best answer from those available. As you can probably see on my screen, five is the correct answer. This is because the passage states that Three quarters of all infections recorded last year were in people from deprived areas and born outside the UK. As a result, only one fourth or a quarter of those born in the UK came from more wealthy families. One may be true, but it is given as a possible reason to explain the weakened immune systems, which may again be the cause of the increased frequency of tuberculosis in deprived areas. Thus, it is a premise not a conclusion. Two, three, and four may be true as well, but they are premises rather than conclusions, as they are plausible reasons for the overall conclusion that tuberculosis incidence has grown, but not in UK-born wealthy populations. When considering all of these options, it's important to note that they are incorrect because they either do not address the whole of the argument, or mostly because they are not conclusions, but they are premises so they support the main conclusion. Keep in mind that something stated in the passage as a fact is a premise. Sometimes candidates confuse premises with conclusions, so make sure to avoid doing that. As you saw from this example, it can be quite tricky to distinguish the two, especially when there's a time limit. Wording can be quite specific in the BMAT, so make sure to pay close attention to the wording of the questions and keep this slide in mind. When a question asks to choose a conclusion, it is one that must logically follow from the text. In most cases, when a question asks to choose a conclusion, the conclusion is not explicitly stated in the passage. It might also not capture the main essence of the passage, although it still can.
This might seem familiar to those of you who are studying for the UCAT because a question asking for a conclusion is the same as selecting true in the true, false, can't tell style questions. Logically follows means from the text without relying on any of your own opinions or outside knowledge. So logically follows means that it cannot be anything other than this. So there cannot be any doubt or uncertainty regarding the conclusion. We use an example here and say that Jim has a brother called Steve. This is a fact. Now, let's say I asked you, does Jim have only one sibling? In this case, you wouldn't be able to determine whether this is true or not based on the information you have. There is uncertainty present and you cannot determine whether this conclusion is true or not as the information didn't, si didn't state anything about Jim having or not having other siblings. So in this case, the conclusion that Jim has only one sibling would not logically follow. However, if I asked you, does Jim have a brother? You would be able to answer yes without any doubts as the conclusion logically follows based on the given premise. Conclusions can also be defined as inferences that logically follow from the passage, which is essentially what can be inferred. Questions that contain mild language such as can, sometimes, and may leave space for outliers. However, can is not the same as will, and sometimes is not the same as always. So, when you come across mild language, do not simply assume that something will or will not happen for sure. On the other hand, questions that have extreme language, such as always, never, most, and all, don't leave any space for outliers. So, do not confuse these with mild language terms. Extreme language will help you determine definitively whether an event logically follows or not. Now, I'll show you another question, and you will have 60 seconds to answer. Please start now. This is an example where you need to identify a conclusion. Hence, it doesn't need to be the main conclusion, it can simply be one that logically follows from the text. Highlighted in red are examples of how both extreme and mild language are used in the BMAP. As you can probably see on my screen, two is the conclusion that logically follows from the text. This is because The text explicitly states that only CO2 from burned plant material is taken up by new vegetation. Hence, answer 2 is correct. The fact that only the burned plant material will be taken up by new vegetation and not everything else shows that some of the CO2 from the fires might remain in the atmosphere. This statement is one that logically follows from the text and hence can be deemed a conclusion. As you can probably see, this is not the main conclusion, but it is simply the best option in this case. A conclusion is simply one that logically follows. Due to the fact that peat is also burned in forest fires, it is possible to conclude that some CO2 will not be taken up by regrowth. Two is the only answer that has premises from the text that backs it up, 
takes into account contributing factors from CO2 emissions and summarizes the essence of the passage as a whole. So what about the other options? Option one says that the forest fires in, D in Indonesia will prevent the achievement of world targets for CO2 emissions. One is inaccurate since Indonesian forest fires account for just a small portion of the net CO2 emission allowance, and there's no information on other possible causes. Thus, it is not a legitimate conclusion. Option three says that it is unlikely that forest fires will emit as much CO2 next year as they have emitted this year. Three is inaccurate since it is unsupported by the premises in the provided information above the question. Option four says that if forest fires can be prevented or better controlled, dangerous global warming will not occur. Four is inaccurate since it ignores other factors that contribute to CO2 emissions. When considering all of these options, it's important to note that they are incorrect because they either do not address the whole argument, because they lack premises to support them, or because they don't logically follow. Remember, a statement can only be deemed a conclusion if it logically follows. Let's move on to the next question style, assumptions. So, what exactly do we mean by assumptions? According to Cambridge Dictionary, assumptions are something that you accept as true without question or proof. As you can see, an assumption is technically a premise that is not stated as a fact. Assumptions support the main essence of the text, but they are not directly stated, unlike premises. So, an assumption will not be explicitly stated in the passage. For the conclusion to be valid, assumptions must be true. Sometimes it can be hard to identify assumptions, and some of you may be better at it than others because it may come naturally to you. Nevertheless, we will go over how to identify whether something is an assumption or not, so there's no need to worry. In order to figure out whether something is an assumption, you need to ask yourself two questions. What information do you require in order to reach a conclusion? And what isn't addressed in the passage yet is crucial to understanding the argument. Assumptions have a tendency to bind the entire argument together, making them the unspoken crux of the argument. Assumptions are the link between the premise and the conclusion. For example, my dog is clever because all border collies are, cl are clever. The premise is that border collies are clever, and the conclusion is my dog is clever. So in this case, the assumption would be that my dog is a border collie. Usually you will be presented with text and the question will ask, which of the following is an assumption underlying the above argument? In this case, you will need to go through each of the answer options to determine which one is correct. Ask yourself if the conclusion is contingent on the statement being true when examining each of the response possibilities. If you answered no, it signifies that the statement does not support this conclusion. And if the answer is yes, the conclusion is supported by the statement. However, if the answer to the question is yes, the assumption is explicitly stated in the passage, then it's not an assumption, it's a premise. Remember, arguments are the links between the premises and the conclusion, so they need to support the essence of the text. I'll present you with another question now, and you will have 60 seconds to answer it. Please start now.
For this assumption question, answer 1 is correct. So, let's find out why this is the correct statement. Statement 1 is valid since sports and entertainment are specifically exempted from the texts list of high IQ, well-paid jobs. Let's break this down step by step. Let's ask ourselves if the conclusion is contingent on this statement being true. So, we know that the conclusion is, the intelligence level of children is largely genetically inherited from their parents. And the premise is, much more likely is that being intelligent tends to result in having a high income since a high level of intelligence is required for entering well-paid well professions such as medicine and law. Based on these two, we can conclude that the conclusion is contingent on this statement being true. We also know that statement 1 is not stated as a fact in the passage and hence can conclude that it's an assumption. You can also notice how the argument links the premise and the conclusion together. So, what about the other answer options? Well, because IQ is not dependent on education, statement 2 is false. The text doesn't even mention education. Answer 3 is wrong because it misinterprets the text's argument which expressly states that the research did not take parental profession into account when analyzing IQs. Answer 4 is incorrect because it makes a point that is far beyond the point of the text. So, none of these can be deemed arguments. So, to summarize, remember the definition of a conclusion, premise, and logically follows. Look out for keywords to identify the principal conclusion. Whenever you are faced with an argument question, simply ask yourself these three questions. Is the conclusion contingent on this statement being true? What information do you require in order to reach a conclusion? And what isn't addressed in the passage yet is crucial to understanding the argument?